Today we'll look at the mesh gradient feature in Affinity. This tool is only available in the new version of Affinity that was released by Canva last week. But the good news is that it's totally free and you can download it for Windows and Mac. Just go to affinity.studio and download it from there. I've opened Affinity here on my Mac and I'm in the Vector Studio. You can see that by the icon up here. But what I show you will basically work in the other studios as well, including the Pixel Studio and Layout Studio. Let's first review how the basic gradient feature works. I'll select the rectangle tool here and I'll draw a rectangle on my canvas. To make a gradient, I'll select this tool here called the Fill Tool. I'll click on this. And if I click and drag on my shape, it creates a gradient. I can click again and drag to change the angle if I like. I can also click the endpoints and drag them around. Now by default, it's gonna have the original color you selected plus a slightly darker version. But if I click on these controls at the end, I can choose a different color over here. So I'll click on this dot here. I'll change it to some type of yellow. Let's make this original one red again. If I click this middle slider, I can change the distribution of the gradient. And if I click somewhere else on this bar, I can add a new point. And once again, when I add that point, I can click on it and I can change the color if I like. So it's a very flexible tool. Now, sometimes you might click off your shape and use a different tool. So for example, if I click here, let's say I wanna use this pencil. I'll click and draw some line down here. So how do I go back to editing the gradient? Well, I can click on my shape in the layer stack, and then I can click on the gradient tool again. And now my controls reappear. And I can continue modifying it as I like. When we have a tool selected in Affinity, the top bar gives us context controls for that tool. So right now I have the gradient tool selected, and up here we can see the options for the gradient. For context, I have it set to fill, but we can also apply gradients to strokes. I can also click on this color bar, and that has the same information as my on-screen controls, but it's just a different visualization. But you can see I can drag it around here. I can click on a point, and I can add another color. But perhaps most importantly, I can change the type of gradient. So right now it's set to linear. If I click this dropdown, we can see different options. I can set it to elliptical. I can set it to radial. We have conical. You can experiment with the different types. But for this video, I just wanna focus on mesh. So let's look at that next. Let's create a new shape. I'll create a red rectangle. I have the rectangle selected. Let's click and drag. Now let's add a mesh gradient to it. With the rectangle selected, I'll click on the fill tool here. I'll choose mesh. And I added a mesh gradient. Now by default, it's not that interesting because all the nodes are the same color. But just like with the linear gradient tool, we can click on the nodes and change the color. I can click on this one. Let's make it yellow. I'll click on this one over here. Maybe I'll make it teal. I'll make this one green. We can also drag them around. But let's say you want to start with a cleaner mesh. You can actually click and drag multiple nodes. And I'll press delete. And now I have just these four nodes in the corner. So let's just change these. I'll change this one to a darker red. Let's change this top right one to yellow. I'll change this bottom right one to green. And let's change this bottom left one to a blue teal. So there we have a pretty nice rainbow pattern. If you want to add color points, click on the lines between the nodes. So right here, I'll hover my cursor over it and I'll click and I've added a point there. I can also click in the middle here. Let's change this middle color to magenta. When you have a node selected, you can click on the handles here and drag it around. If I hold the option key on the Mac, I can drag one side at a time. That drags it in a sharp way, which you can see set up here too. If you ever forget hotkeys for the tool you're on, look to the bottom of the screen to see hints. So when I have a handle selected, there you can see the drag option to move as a cusp. Now, one thing you do wanna be careful about is moving the points too sharply. So if I select this middle point, if I drag it around, if you drag it too far to the edge, you can see it starts to tear a little bit. I don't know if that's intentional or not, but it's something to be aware of. Also, if you drag the edges, they'll get pulled in too. So if I click and drag here, you'll see the gradient gets pulled down that way and there's space behind it. So just be aware of that also. The mesh gradient works with other vector shapes too, including text. In Affinity, you can create short amounts of text with the artistic text tool. This is useful for things like headings and titles. The frame text tool is used for paragraphs, but let's use the artistic text tool. That's this tool over here, artistic text. I'll click on it. I'll drag on my canvas, let's write a word. Let's choose a thicker font. Arial there is pretty thick. I'll drag it out. 
And just like before, we select our object and we use the fill tool. So with my text selected, I'll choose the fill tool here. Let's change the type to mesh. Let's delete some of these points just to simplify it at first. And let's change the colors. Now I could change the whole thing at once. I'll click and drag all of this. Let's make it all red to start. And I'll click this top right one. So just that one's selected. And let's make it yellow. Let's make the bottom right one, let's say blue. And let's make this bottom left one, I don't know, magenta. And you can keep editing the mesh as you like. I can do another vector shape. Let's do a heart. So I'll click and hold on the rectangle and I'll choose the heart here. I'll drag it. It remembers the mesh I just did, but if you wanna quickly reset it, just choose some other color. Let's do that. Let's go back to the fill tool and I'll change it to another mesh. And we can select nodes and change the color from there. And we can create whatever kind of pattern we like. Now, one thing that can happen when you make gradients is the colors can get a little muddied. So if I start to add points like this, Notice in the middle, this green here, it's a little dark. If I add more, you'll see they continue to get more desaturated. So what you can do is you can click on points, and if you like, you can just drag the color over here to try to get some of that saturation back. Of course, it's going to depend on the style you're going for. So this color here, it's a little muddy. I'll drag it up this way. This here is a little muddy. Let's change it to something brighter. You can also add a vibrance adjustment above your shape. I have a whole video talking about adjustments. It's for Affinity V2, but it mostly applies to this latest version also. I'll leave a link in the description below. But for right now, the short explanation I'll give is that I can click this button down here for adjustments, and I can scroll down and add one called Vibrance. And with these sliders, we can control the vibrance or even saturation. So notice how I drag the saturation up, I'm getting a changed effect over here. Again, whether or not this looks good in your situation will vary, but it's a good tool to know. So this is before, after, before, after. Have you tried the new gradient mesh tool in Affinity? What do you think of it? Let me know down in the comments below. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.